All right, hey guys, Ozzy here. Just a little bit of a forewarning about this review. It's not as good as I wanted it to be, simply because my uh, editing software just decided to crash on me uh, right at the end of the review as I was about to do the scene transitions and like the movement and stuff, uh, just to keep you guys entertained and things. So the review isn't gonna be as sparkly, it isn't gonna look as good, so you'll have to bear with it, but um, is what it is. Can I just vlog in peace? Why can't cars just off? Oh. Uh, but yeah, tonight I'm going to be uh, reviewing the Sontaran episode live after the episode comes out. Probably about between half ten and eleven o'clock, uh, because I still have work. So make sure you're there. It'll be a good time. It'll be fun. Uh, bring some popcorn and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I will see you guys tonight. Enjoy the review, or at least try to. Never agree to see this to the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah. Hold on. What is. What? What is this? Dalek Invasion Minifigures Multi Pack. It's so intriguing. What the hell are these things? I must find out more. All right, so let's type in Dalek Bobble Buddies. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay, that's interesting. A few listings. Hang on. Wait, Big Chief Studios? No, 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 that can't be right. Oh, it is. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, thanks, advert. Go away. 1999. Huh, how peculiar. Maybe we should see if there's any more of these available. So let's type in Doctor Who Bobble Buddies. Okay, and, oh wait, n nothing? Um, okay, so Doctor Who Bobble? One thing. Okay, and it's sold out. Hmm. Maybe I should just Google it instead, hang on. Doctor Who Bobble Buddies. Oh, so there's, there's quite a few. There's a, a third Doctor, a fourth Doctor, a tenth Doctor, and a Dalek. Huh. These are pretty horrific, but you know, the, they certainly exist. That Dalek looks way too skinny, but uh, so taking a look at the packaging, you can see all four displayed in a nice window box, which is very similar to the B&M style packaging, uses exactly the same style guide. On the top left, we have the BBC logo and the Dot Who logo, which is stacked, followed by some nice Gallifreyan symbols. Underneath, we have the TARDIS in a kind of artistic thing. I don't know what to say. Dalek Invasion Minifigures Multipack. More Gallifreyan symbols across with a yellow band on top. Warning, adult content not suitable for children under 14 years of age. I, I wonder why that's on there, seeing as this is very much a toy novelty kind of thing. Figurines feature bobbling action. Dalek Invasion Minifigures Multipack. BBC and Doctor Who logos again. On the side we have a write-up of what products this thing features. We've got an Emperor Dalek, which is obviously not true. It's an Emperor's Guard Dalek. Sure, you just call it Guard Dalek, but whatever. Gold Dalek, Dalek Warrior, and Necros Dalek. And on the back we have the four products which are on the front in a promotional looking way. The little Bobble Buddies logo along with the Big Chief Studios logo. BBC and Doctor Who logo again, BBC logo. The Daleks are the Doctor's ultimate opponents, forever trying to conquer the galaxy. They have engineered many evil and elaborate schemes to invade Earth, only to be thwarted by the Doctor and his companions every time. So yeah, let's take these little bastards out of the box and see what they look like. So the box is taped up at the top, so you just remove the tape, take the four guys out, and it's quite funny, this space background just looks like it's been taken off of Google Images. So yeah, it's worth noting that taking these out of the box is really difficult. They're really, really jam-packed in, and I'm surprised I didn't break anything while taking them out of the box because they were that concrete in. So yeah, as you can see, these guys, they wobble for a very long time. So you push on the top and then release, and then off you go. Very wobbly, very cute, very cool. Something you just put on your desk at work. Uh, they definitely do have a nice charm to them. I do, I do really appreciate them. Because how do you do a bobblehead Dalek? You kind of have to put it on the base. Speaking of which, underneath you can find the Dot Who logo and some legal guffins. But yeah, overall first impressions, very cute, very nice. Obviously not accurate because they're not meant to be, but let, let's take a look at these guys in, in depth, shall we? So we'll take a look at the Dalek Emperor, which it obviously isn't the Dalek Emperor, but 
we'll just have to let that slide. You can see it's just a standard Evil of the Daleks guard with a pupil, which is quite interesting. Looking around the back, it follows the exact same design motif as the rest, because of course it does. It's interesting how the skirt doesn't have the two rows on the... Uh, you know which part I'm talking about, the part which has two rows on one panel. And obviously you've got the base as well, which is actually kind of falling off of this one. It's being glued in a very strange way, so there's a lip, and I think this is just a manufacturing error. Uh, from what I've seen, the quality control on these isn't fantastic. And the Hemis have been painted in quite a nice shade of blue, probably better than the ones on the character options version. So on the midsection we've got four slats instead of six, but I guess that's just so they can reuse the moulds because it's a novelty, it doesn't really matter uh, that much. You've got the oval in the middle, which obviously they didn't have, but yeah, cutting costs because you don't really need these to be accurate because they're novelties. Got the cute little gun, very stubby. Then we've got a plunger, which it, it looks more like a new series plunger to me, but I don't know, maybe it's me just hallucinating or something. Uh, then the next section, we've got the fourth neck thing on the bottom, which only the Necros Daleks and the Resurrection Daleks had, but yeah, like I said, they're just reusing the same sculpt over and over again. I do like how the struts are much chunkier, because it, it really does give it more of a novelty feel, and it just cements that they're not going for accuracy. Moving up to the eye stock, it's been actually really tightly painted. The paint apps are really good on this, and they've gone for the correct light blue, which is really nice. And obviously because it can't have an oversized head, it has an oversized uh, eye stalk bulb uh, just to make it look that much cuter and speaking of which you can see that this obviously has a pupil like I said earlier which only one Dalek in the Unevil of the Daleks did which is it's kind of cool uh, I think it was just an accidental uh, <laughs> accuracy there but whatever the headlights are very basic just been painted white I think the paint apps could have been done a lot better here perhaps they could have casted it in a clear plastic and then painted the figure from there so you actually had clear headlights I think that would have worked uh, a lot better but doesn't really matter uh, so yeah I won't go on too in depth over the next ones because like I said the sculpt are exactly the same so we've got a gold Dalek here from Day of the Daleks quite nice looking I think the shade of gold is pretty good uh, and as you can see there's a mark on the on the dome like I said the quality control isn't fantastic on these guys but then again they are kind of very cheap novelty figures so you kind of get what you pay for really but then again, 1999 is actually quite expensive for these. Then we've got the Dalek Warrior. Now this suffers the exact same problem that the character version does in the fact that it's too dark. Uh, it should be just just a tad lighter, but um, oh, it, overall it looks nice enough. It serves its purpose, and I do like the name Dalek Warrior. It kind of just gives it more of a personality. Uh, the gun is silver when it shouldn't be, but accuracy doesn't matter, but at the same time it, it does kind of bug me a little bit. And as you can see, this one's wonkier than the rest because it's like lopsided onto one side is a bit of a shame. Last up we have our little Necros boy. Very cute. I think this is probably my favourite out of all of them. Um, he's got the raised neck section area, which is obviously how it was in the show. And I don't know, I just think it looks really cool. I just always like this black, uh, white and gold colour scheme that they had. And it sort of looks like it could go on your Christmas tree. So I think I'm going to put that on our Christmas tree. So yeah, overall, what do I think of these guys? Yeah, they're really cool. They're very nice. They're kind of adorable. I got this from B&M for $14.99 instead of the $19.99 price tag. I still think $14.99 is quite expensive for these guys, considering how cheaply made they are. Uh, and the quality control errors and things like that, I think $7.99 would have been more of a fitting price point, to be honest, really. Uh, but then again, Big Chief just love to overprice things, don't they? Uh, hey, at least they're a lot better than the horrible David Tennant and Matt Smith like novelty things they did from a few years back. Those were so bad. I just never want to see those again. But yeah, overall, I would recommend these. Uh, perhaps maybe wait until they're cleared out in B&M. Maybe they'll reduce the price tag over Christmas or something. Who knows? Um, but it's kind of interesting that they did end up in B&M. I think maybe Big Chief just saw that character options were doing well with B&M sets and thought, you know what, we'll release cheap tat as well. So anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, I've been wrong again. 